Okay, and Vicki Bly has another question about tools, and it's specifically about saws. The various, by making, she wants to talk about the various saws and what you would use them for. I can talk about this in general. This is really the sort of thing I'd like to go grab all the tools and do with them. But I'll give you an overview right now, which is um, if I could only have one tool, one saw in a maker shop, one powered saw. Ah, actually, I'll give it to you for both of these. If I could only have one hand saw and one power saw, I'll get them and show you. Um, hand saw would without a doubt be a Japanese woodworking saw. Um, I have been using these for 35 years and uh, the older I get, the more I learn how to let the saw do its work, uh, that the grip is a light one, that the relationship is one of tension and balance and calmness and not forcing. Um, I haven't broken a tooth off of one of my Japanese saws in a few weeks, which is pretty good for me. Um, for me, all tool usage is a battle against my impatience. This is the one hand saw that I would have. And there are many different versions of this. Uh, the two different types of teeth are for straight cuts and cross cuts. And I can never remember which is which. Um, but powered saws, if I could only have one powered saw, hoo -hoo, it would be this one. Um, I did a conference uh, this weekend with some friends. We. Uh, uh, some Google friends, some art friends, some friends from creative and business worlds. Uh, we put together a small conference up in Northern California for 100 people that we love. And it was a really, really lovely weekend. I put together a small makerspace uh, for this. Uh, and in the makerspace, I had one of my portable bandsaws. And somebody came up to me who had never seen one and said, what is that? And I... I I will tell you, the first time I saw the Milwaukee Portable Bandsaw, um, it changed my life. I bought it. Hold on, here we go. So this is the Portable Bandsaw. This is DeWalt. Milwaukee makes one. I think Makita makes one. This is the bigger of the two DeWalt Bandsaws. They make a smaller handheld. Um, these will go through everything. These will go through metal, they'll go through wood, they'll go through plastic. They go slow, so they tend, they don't melt stuff when you're cutting through it. The blades are easy to replace. They're inexpensive. It's easy to have like 20 on hand. Um, I literally keep this at arm's reach because of how often I use it. And when I first got mine on Mythbusters, everyone on the crew joked that I might as well make my sandwiches using it because I used it for everything. Um, so the reasons that make, the things that make this a great powered saw are that it's slow, it's hard to hurt yourself with it. And hurting yourself is an occupational hazard with every other saw that I have here. Don't get me wrong, you can cut yourself with this. And I have, uh, but you have to work at it. Um, after this, I would say the next most uh, reasonable one would be a bandsaw, more than a table saw, uh, if space is at a premium, and it usually is. Um, the table saw is excellent for the, uh, 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 the table saw is phenomenal for regular, straight, simple cuts, and that's what I use it for all the time. I, I often, I do some datoing with it, but not, not frequently. Um, but where were we? We were talking about saws and why you use ones over the other. The fact is most saws can be used for most of the things that saws do. And in the corners of what they can do, a bandsaw with a quarter inch wide blade can make cuts that this can't. Uh, it can make cuts that the bandsaw can't, uh, that, the, that the portable bandsaw can't. Um, and so if that type of intricate work is important to you, the bandsaw might be what you want. However, you might also be able to do all of that work you want with a handheld coping saw. Um, Vicki, I'm sorry I don't have a more definitive answer to your question because it's an excellent one. And it may be that I should just shoot a video running around the shop, trying all these saws and talking about the various things, materials and techniques that work with each one of them and the limitations of each. It's a good idea for a video. 
Have you ever struggled with anxiety about scary tools? If so, how did you overcome this? I want to do more woodwork, but I'm terrified of powered saws. That is just common sense. You should be terrified of powered saws. They are terrifying. Um, that being said, uh, engineers have done a great job over the last few decades making powered saws safer. But the, the truth is you are still turning on this high speed spinning metal blade and feeding it into something. And you really wanna make sure that something you're feeding into it is none of you. Um, look, I still hate routers and it still takes me a minute to like get my energy up to utilize a router uh, because they're exhausting. And having that exposed blade out there, it always just seems to me, it's like the first time I rode a ski lift, I'm like, how is this legal? How is it possible that on this mountain I can sit in this chair with no safeties and ride up the mountain? How is it feasible that with all of the other safety things that we've built into the world that this still doesn't have seat belts? I have an answer in my head, but that doesn't really matter. The best way to use a powered saw is not just to set it up to use, but to picture and even mentally and sometimes physically practice the push that you are going to do to feed a piece of work through that saw or to feed that saw past a piece of work. The more, whenever I use a table saw, I'm not kidding, I spread my legs because I'm like expecting someone to drop a bucket of greased marbles at my feet. Like, I am always terrified using the table saw. I consider it the most dangerous thing I do on a daily basis. Um, and it's the funny, it's the funny uh, maturation that one does as a maker, as a user of tools. When you are first beginning making with tools, you think everything is about the tool. I will need to use this tool and then I can make this cut. And the answer is, well, it's not quite like that. First you need to draw it and then you need to actually support it. You need a jeweler's foot or something that I built out of a two by four here. Uh, you need good lighting. There's all this other stuff that's really vital for the setup. And as you mature as a maker, there's this key moment at which you learn that it's not about the use of the tool, that the actual using of the tool is the smallest part of using the tool, and that the setup is the largest part of using the tool, and that it's like a 90 to 10 relationship between getting your fence set up, getting your safety set up, getting the featherboard set up, making sure that you have ability to push this thing, to complete it through, that you're holding a push stick, you maybe have a second push stick if you need it over here. Once you've worked through all of that and you know that none of your limbs are going to be in inter section with any of the spinning things, then you can turn on the blade and push your part. And having that level of discreteness to it is super vital. Um, the most dangerous thing you can do with a powered saw is repetitive work. That's when you should be on high, high, high alert. That's when the most experienced carpenters I've worked with have gotten hurt. Oh man, one of my coworkers was making the tiny little wood slats for the wooden deck of one of the battleships from Pearl Harbor. And that's when he almost took off one of his, uh, tip of one of his fingers. Um, so repetitive work is one of the places that you should be on high alert. But just practicing your movement, making sure you feel safe about it, making sure that your hands are always the distance you're comfortable with away from the work. And when you're like talking about table saws, there are some wonderful tools that people have made now that keep your hands far from the work if that's what you desire. Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to support us even further, you can by becoming a tested member. Uh, details are of course below, but it includes all sorts of perks and we're building them all the time. You get advanced word and behind the scenes photos of some of our projects questions you get to ask direct questions during my live streams and we have some members only videos including the adam real-time series of unbroken unedited shots of me working here in the shop they are weirdly meditative thank you guys so much i'll see you on the next one